Saxon Algebra 2, Lesson 9, Greeting Students. We are still on the trail of reviewing everything that we've covered in the past. So Settle In today will be a lesson that we've even begun to review this year. This isn't the first time we've talked about this. So it should be comfortable and familiar. Uh, we're gonna talk about percent word problems. They are one of the three kinds of frickin' formula problems. So let's just review all the forms that they can come in. Uh, the first style is when we use a fraction to divide a total group into a spe special group. One third of the clowns had orange noses. We can also use a decimal to divide them up. And when we use either fractions or decimals, we are usually taking an existing group and dividing it into two smaller groups. We can also use the percentage form of the equation to divide one group into a smaller group. But with percents, we can do a th another thing that is kind of weird. We can take a group and grow it bigger, right? And let's just remember the rules for that. Again, I, th I think we've touched on this already this year, but I'm just giving you an intentional review right now. Sometimes we'll start with an original group and we'll grow it. And I call those the peanut style, right? Because this is our original group and we're making it bigger. And with a little imagination, you can see that this looks like a peanut in the shell. Kind of, right? So I call these peanut style problems. Also known as the baby Jesus because it can also look like the baby in his swaddling clothes, right? Um, one of my students pointed that out. My mind was all, only on food. Um, but I think I drew a picture of that last week or so. We can also have percents that are less than 100. And those I call ice cream sundae problems because there's our whole group and we divide it. In my mind, this looks like hot fudge on the top of a scoop of vanilla ice cream. I know, you kind of have to work on that. Um, but I call these ice cream sundaes. type problems to distinguish them. So when we have an ice cream sundae problem, that means we are taking the original group and we're dividing it and talking about one or the other of those. Sometimes we have to talk about both, that's a little tricky. Fractions and decimals only fit this category. But when we have percents, we can also go greater than 100%. Um, and that creates this expanded bubble situation that yields the peanuts, all right? So in today, we're gonna do one of these and then we're gonna do one of these. There are some lovely stories in this one and I just can't wait to read them to you. This example 9.1 is one of my favorites. The wood nymphs and the maids gambled and frolicked, frolicked before the banquet began. 70% of those presents, present were wood nymphs and 120 maids were present. How many wood nymphs came to the banquet? Okay, first of all, I think I've told you this too to this year, but John likes to use really weird story problems like this to help us see that you don't really have to understand the words at all. You just have to see how to pluck the numbers. Oh, excuse me. You just have to see how to pull the numbers out and do the math. You don't really have to wrap your head around it. Although this one I like to because wood nymphs, I think are like fairies that live in the forest, right? And maids, young girls, they're gamboling and frolicking, which means running around, right? Um, and they're having some sort of banquet, I presume in the forest, because I don't think wood nymphs can come out of the forest. I think they have to stay there um, in order to exist. So I'm imagining this in a clearing in the woods and they're all just frolicking around. I think they're tiny as well, I don't know. Maids are usually human size, but I'm liking to think these are all tiny creatures. So I take a minute just to enjoy that vision in my head and then I turn my attention to the math. What we've got is a group of people at a banquet. Well, I mean, I use the word people loosely. 
This is wood nymphs and maids. Notice I'm not gonna take the time to write that out. This represents 100% of the group. And as always, I know this is my of number. Then what happens is we're gonna divide them. We're gonna break the wood nymphs apart from the maids. We wanna see how many we have of each. So I divide them. These are the wood nymphs. These are the maids. 70% of those present were wood nymphs. Okay, I like to write my percents on the outside. And that means the maids have to be 30%, right? Because I know they have to add up to 100. Wood nymphs and maids. And then we're told that 120 maids were present. How many wood nymphs came to the party? Oh, hmm, okay. So, this problem is interesting because we know a lot about how the group splits, but we don't know how many there are in all. And we need to know this in order to figure this number out. We've got the percentages straightened out, but we need the absolute number of wood nymphs, and we can't get that unless we have this number. So we're gonna have to find this number first. I'm gonna call it Y, just because, you know, it's fun. So the first thing that we wanna do use what we know to solve for Y. Then once we have this number, we'll use this number to solve for X, okay? But we have to look at this data first. This is gonna be our first set of is information because we'll be able to use that to solve for Y, right? We'll have two of the three pieces. So we're gonna use this is our is number first and we'll use this as our percent to solve for of, and then we'll have a step two. So we're gonna set it up as 30 over 100 times Y equals 120. Thirty over 100 times Y equals 120. And I'm just gonna quickly redraw our picture up here. 70%, 30%. Notice that I don't really worry about putting my line, like it doesn't represent exactly 70% and 30%. I'm just kind of um, dividing it and not worrying about it. These are our wood nymphs, these are our maids. This is everybody we're calling this Y. This is them combined. I'm not gonna try and squeeze that in. Well, I'll put it up here. Wood nymphs plus maids. We're saying that in our first pass, this is our of number, this is our is number, and this is our percentage over here. That's what I've got here, right? Percent over 100 times Y equals 120. So I'm using the fact that we know both of these in order to create this number. Now all we have to do is solve this equation, and this is step one. So I'll multiply by the reciprocal. I could reduce first, but that's okay. I'm not gonna take the time to do that because I'll do all my canceling at once over here. 100 over 30. I like to put that over a one so that I can clearly see, oh yeah, I'm multiplying fractions. Now we can divide. In order to cancel here, 30 into 120 goes four times. And so we get y equals 400. Now that's not our final answer, but that tells us how many wood nymphs and maids are at the banquet in the forest gambling and frolicking about. That's super helpful. Now we've got this number and we can solve step two, solve for x. So we'll use now this is our step two is number and this 
is our step 2%. I just crossed those out so that you can see I was shifting gears and working up here now. Okay, we'll set this up. Our percent is 70 over 100 times the of number, which we now know, 400 equals x. Aha! Nice. Uh, this is super easy to reduce. All the numbers are on one side, right? 400 divided by 100 is 4, and then x equals 280 wood nymphs are gamboling and frolicking in the forest. That is correct. That's the right answer. This was a fun problem because we really had to think about what we were going to do with the information we had in order to get the information we wanted. And we had to work it in two steps. Holy cow. Uh, okay, that's the first problem. There are only two problems in this lesson and only one topic, so we're almost done. Example 9.2 is going to be the, uh, the other kind. This is gonna be a peanut style problem, and I'll tell you how we know right away. Notice that in our last problem, our percents were less than 100, right? They were 70 and 30. Okay, so that fit our rule that that style of problem creates an ice cream sundae. This style of problem, we'll wait and see. Okay, the harvest was cornucopian as it was 120% greater than last year. If the yield was 140,800 bushels, how many bushels were harvested last year? All right, let's just get a handle on what's going on. This is a very fall themed problem, which is fun. It uses the word cornucopian, which I don't think I've ever encountered in my life before. I've heard cornucopia. That's one of those wicker horn-shaped things that you see at Thanksgiving and the people make the fruit come spilling out of it, right? That's called a cornucopia, also known as a horn of plenty. It um, symbolizes a rich harvest. And so what we can assume although we don't really need to know, is that this was a really good crop, a really good harvest this year. <clears throat> a bumper crop, you might say. It was greater than last year. Okay, so let's start with this. And we also hear the number, it was 120% greater than last year. Now that's the tricky part about these. We know we have last year's plus more. Last year's was 100%. This one says it's 120% greater than last year. And we remember that we can look at this uh, number in our story as being two parts. It's all of last year's plus an increase, right? When you have more than last year, that means you have the same amount plus a little bit, right? This one says it is 120% greater than last year. So we'll start with the amount that we had last year plus the increase to find that this year's percent is 220. That's the trickiest part, is remembering that you have to add. If the percentage is given as an increase, you have to add it to 100%. If it says this year's harvest is 220% of last year's, then you don't have to worry about that. So you have to look for the word increase or more. It's tricky, I'll help you. Okay, if the yield was this big number, I don't usually write them both in there, but I did this time. Um, if it was that many, how many bushels were harvested last year? Okay, the nice thing about percents over 100, like this problem, is that we don't have two groups, we only have one group because our original group has just expanded. So we don't have that dividing, you know, there's no is, two is groups. So in that sense, these problems are easier to set up. Okay, so we don't have, this is the of number, always. 
This is the is number, and here's our percent. Usually I would put the percent outside, but I just put them both in there. There's lots of room in this little infant baby Jesus, um, or peanut. You guys know that Jimmy Carter, who was a president in the 70s, he, he was, before he was the president, I think he was also the governor of Georgia. He's from Georgia. He used to um, be a peanut farmer full time. Yes, he raised peanuts. So I always think of him when I do these problems. He's still alive, I think he's 97. He's the president, the ex-president that does all of the Habitat for Humanity work. He's a re he seems to be a really nice man. I've never met him, so I can't say for sure. All right, let's set this problem up. We've got everything identified and we get P over 100. And the fact that this is a, a big percentage, it doesn't change how we set this up, it's exactly the same, times the of number, which is X, equals the is number, which is that big thing. And I'm gonna put it over one because I can see what's gonna happen here, where we've got to, we've got to isolate him, get him free of these numbers, so we're gonna have to multiply by a reciprocal. 100 over 220. Holy Moses, right? That's a big number. This all cancels down to nothing, right? This, let's see, let's divide by 10, right? And then let's take into account the fact that we can divide two into both 10 and 22. 10 divided by two is five. 22 divided by two is 11. All right, let's see now if 11 will go into that big number. And I will just say this for John. He makes these come out really nice. They almost always work out evenly. We can divide that into that Pray that it works, and then we'll multiply whatever we get times five. All right, 11 into 14 goes once. Three, and we bring down a zero. 11 into 30, that goes twice, right? 22. Oh, here's where the happiness happens. We subtract and get eight, and we bring down an eight. So we see, oh, John did make it work out perfect. When we subtract here, we get zeros, and it's zeros all the rest of the way. So we just put in a couple more zeros here, and we get that this into this is 12,800. Nice. Now we just have to multiply that by five, and we'll be done. Zero, zero, 40, 10, um, I'm going to be quiet and just let you multiply or divide. I trust that you know how to do these calculations. I know you don't learned how to do them a million years ago, but sometimes we have to remember um, again if we're used to using calculators, which I know at this point you haven't used calculators in several years. So I'll just do it and you do it. And if you need to look at what I'm doing, feel free. And after I finish, I always just wait a minute or two so that you can catch up. Maybe you're faster than me. Okay, so our final answer is 64,000 equals X. And what even does that mean? Oh, that's bushels in last year's harvest. So I'm going to box my answer here. And then I'm gonna squeeze it in up here so that my diagram is complete. In the end, I wanna see all of the numbers filled in in the diagram. That's the best way to make sure that you're really understanding these problems is that you can fill in all the different pieces. Okay, beautiful. That's the end of lesson nine. For your practice, notice that one of the problems is a an ice cream sundae style, one of the problems is a peanut style. Make sure you're practicing both so that you get comfortable. A lot of times at this point, students feel comfortable with ice cream sundaes, and mm, 
I'm not gonna say struggle, but find a little bit more challenge in the peanut ones because of this whole increase thing. This is the part that really gets tricky on these. Um, is, uh, is the percentage that you're given, is that the increase or is that the final number? So pay close attention to that. And then please do the odds in the problem set and I will see you for less than 10 spoilers. It's Pythagorean theorem, which is such a cute little friend. Okay, thank you, goodbye.